Hello everybody and welcome to A Psychic Affair. I'm Dorothy and we're going to showcase my Sacred Souls Oracle cards today. Um, and uh, I've got a couple of readings but I've also got a little treat. I've decided to make another deck and it's going to be a tarot deck. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up in the first look in the whole wide world <laughs> as usual here on Intuit Talks. I'll give you a bit of a glimpse into some of the cards that I've already created. It's got a wee way to go, but I thought you might like to have a little bit of a look-see at it because it's nice to see things you know that nobody else has seen yet. Um, yes, you're in there, Jules. Good on you, love. Um, I'll just give, bear with me and I'll just do Jules's draw and we'll, we will carry on. The Sacred Souls Oracle deck, I determined, you know, I wanted something that was easy for people to read themselves without necessarily having to learn anything from the books, um, not necessarily having to, um, you know, go out and, and study, but it could tweak your own consciousness. It could, uh, you know, allow you to just draw from the particular things that attracted you in the cards. Uh, and, and you could give yourself or another person a, a great reading without any real um, challenges there. The other interesting aspect of that for me was... Um, that if you wanted to read for yourself and were having trouble getting uh, a little bit of objectivity, which is a really common thing, then you could use the book, and it's not just the cards, but the individual parts of the cards, um, individual aspects, uh, one thing that might have drawn your attention that could uh, come in and play a significant role in, in um, making it a unique reading for you, you know, making it specific just for you. Hi, you're Michelle, it's great to have you in-house. And so that's why these were born, really. I wanted oracle cards with a bit of depth. I wanted oracle cards that weren't so simplistic that when you drew them, it was hard to kind of work out how, how that card, was, what relevance that card had for the question that you were asking. Um, because then, really, you're doing an intuitive reading, in which case the cards are irrelevant. So for those that want the direction and the guidance of the cards, I wanted the cards that could offer you that without any real problems without any real in-depth learning. So that's how the Sacred Souls Oracle came about. It hasn't yet been published, so um, we keep just trotting them out on shows here and there uh, for, for the pure enjoyment of, um, of, of doing that. And the pure enjoyment of, of sharing the cards and still playing with them, because of course if I don't play with them, who oh, will? <laughs> there's, a, there's a little bit of that in there, right? There's that, uh, yeah, it, where do you... Where do you get that information from, how do you stay on top of the cards. Uh, and every time I chop them out, every time I draw them, then I'm in that lovely position of, uh, really lovely position of, of knowing how my cards are working, you know, knowing that they're working well, knowing that they work together well, knowing that they read well. Those are the important things, aren't they, when you make a set of cards, no matter who you are. Um, that is the key to the set of cards, that they have to work well. And they need to, um, they need to give you the information that you're trying to get out of them, basically, uh, in a nutshell. So we'll get on with it. We won't bore you any more with details and, and, and stuff that you're not necessarily that keen on. But when I start the readings, I will ask you for one wee thing, um, as individuals, if you like. There's, um, no, I'm not on cam, Jules. Uh, because I'm using my phone, I am travelling, so the pictures will come up of the reading and of the cards. But I'm, I'm voice only, sorry, love. Uh, just because it's on my phone and I didn't want to upset the sound too much or worse, upset the actual visual. So here we go. Now first off the rank is Christy, who was first in to ask and then straight after that Michelle. And then we've got Jules, Lucky Jules. Now um, the key for understanding information here is to look at the cards and you can enlarge them yourself, I think, um, on your view. I'm not sure. Can you? Can you enlarge them for your own view? And then you can determine um, if there's any one card, is how I'm going to put it, uh, that has something in it that stands out for you, Christy, then say so, whether it's the sun, whether it's the lighthouse, whether it's a statue, uh, whether it's a colour or a part of the card. Um, we'll make them a little bit bigger. I'm just realising that making them bigger makes them a bit fuzzy. The very first um, thing I want to tell you too is the layout that I've used here is called the Freedom Spread. It's my own spread. And all of the cards have a relevance in the way that they group together and come out together. So I'm heading down that Lenormand track with this type of layout where the relationships of the cards are as important as the cards themselves. So I have to pop that back to a bit smaller so I can see the full layout. <coughs> 
All right, here we go. Now, the card on the right is a message from you to you, Christy, and that's for any of you listening to the next slot as well. So initially, we've got relationships, and I've got the strength card or the male card here, and these go really well together. You may be finding that you're having difficulties with a male in your life or a person in your life that wants to exert power over you. Because we've got the relationships card in there, thank you very much, Jill. Because we've got the relationship card in there and we've got water and fire, this is something that can be managed very well. Water puts out the flame of fire. So if things get heated, then you can move back to your comfort zone and what you know a good relationship to be. It doesn't have to be about communicating things you don't want to communicate, but it is important to think about what that relationship means to you and where you want it to sit and quite literally, in this case, putting it in its place. That means if somebody's uh, trying to be overbearing, if they're trying to tell you what to do, or if they're very opinionated about your choices, Christy, then you can quite happily sit there and go, well, yeah, that might be what you think, but your opinion doesn't matter as much to me as you would like it to. <laughs> and that's pretty much that energy right there. Now, the next three cards that I've got really working together are the strategy card, we've got the manifestation card, and we've got the lifesaver card. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's also a vacation card. And so I've got the idea that, you know, sometimes when you're working at working at working at, you're actually better to do less, less is more, rather than trying harder and harder and harder. These three cards show me that you can get what you want by really managing the way you go forward, really planning, thinking about the next step and the next step and the next step. Uh, it's called strategy. Uh, this card on the left here is a strategy card. And so if you focus on the strategy, and you'll have more time to be free to think about other things rather than allowing your whole consciousness to be absorbed by how you're manifesting and what you're doing. It can become a bit of a trap, especially in spirituality, where we, we, we're taught re almost religiously that what we focus on determines the law of attraction, but really it determines what we see as an opportunity rather than what is there for us. So when we relax that a little bit, it's like working... I think the words I want to say here actually to... To, to minimalize that and to bring that together nicely for you is, you know, um, what is it? Work smarter, not harder. That's what that little little three card spread says to me. Those three together. And I'll pull them all together in the end, but that's those those working together. Now we've got the the phoenix as the catalyst card and the solitary card uh, are kind of together here. But I want to put this one just a little bit separate and lean the phoenix card into the karma card. Now the karma card and the and the catalyst card. They offer you quick retribution. <laughs> that is to say, you might sit in one minute, minute and go, you know, I, I, I don't know why that person's behaving that way, and then find you, you are behaving that way, or you may get judgmental about somebody and find that somebody is judging you. So I've got quick retribution, and you may need to really think about your words, think about your actions, whether it's worth saying anything or better to say nothing. At this particular stage, it seems to me that sometimes saying nothing will be a lot more pleasant than saying something. Bearing in mind, we've got the overbearing guy over there. I don't think they're together. This is two separate things, so you might have just peripheral annoyances. Uh, I can remember once years ago, I was walking through the supermarket and this woman's kid threw a tantrum. And I actually thought in my stupidity, I wish that woman get a handle on her kid, right? Of course, who's got two little children? I had a two-year-old boy and I had a three-and-a-half-year-old girl. <laughs> and the very next day, I'm in a different place and my son decides to throw up an absolute pearler of a wobbly. And all I thought was, with chagrin, ah, well, there's my come up and sit with it because it's not about the, the parent not controlling their child. Just children are going to do that sometimes and then you've just got to work out how embarrassed you're going to be, how you're going to manage it, or whether you're going to run away and cry. You know, It's a difficult situation. So this catalyst and this karma card suggest that if you do judge somebody, something will happen, and it will happen in a big way. It will let you know that you probably need to modify that thought, that thinking pattern, or that behavior. Um, and, and it will let you know karma is very real, and it does kick butt pretty quickly. But you also need to know that a catalyst it can be, or a karma can be a positive thing. It's not... We all go, karma, ah, but it can be a positive thing. So it will reward you as well as, as, as give you a little discipline. Um, so you're looking for those rewards. So those things that you have done to help others, those things that you have put out there that are good, you're going to get a very quick return for those. Now, it doesn't mean that if you did something for somebody 10 years ago, somebody's going to come back and do something for you today or that person's going to repair it or change things. But what it does mean is if you chuck $10 at a person sitting on the corner or in a charity box or $5, 5 cents, doesn't matter what, uh, that you'll very quickly get a turnaround. 
And I've got another story for you. I caught, I had a period of time where I couldn't catch car wai, right? And Christy might remember this. I couldn't catch a car wai for love and the money. It's a type of fish. And I was catching snapper, snapper, snapper. And everybody loved snapper. And I was like, I just want a car wai. About six weeks later, I caught a skinny little car wai. <laughs> and I was like, woohoo, I've done it. I'm standing there and one of these men that goes out and he puts the long line out came in and he was swearing and he was cursing. He was saying, all the fish have stolen my bait today. I might as well give up fishing, sell the boat. He was really upset. He said, oh, no, I've got no bait for tomorrow. And I looked down at my cowway and I picked it up in my hands and I said to him, would you like this cowway for bait for tomorrow? And he took it and he was very nice. And I remember walking away and thinking, bugger, I wish I hadn't given him my cowway. Like it was like negative all the way home. Stupid cow, it's the only cowway you've caught in ages, da 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 da. On one hand, I felt happy that I'd done something nice. On the other hand, I thought, well, you know, I just robbed myself. I carried on home. I was home for about an hour or so. And another couple that were staying in the camp that also knew about my uh, cowway saga, they came into the camp and his wife walked up to me with this beautiful, big, fat cowway. And she gave it to me and she says, here you go, we got you, Kawai, Dorothy. And I was so over the moon. So I'd given him a scrawny little Kawai. I had sort of done something nice, but I still had little stormy thoughts about that. But the karma came right back at me within a couple of hours and gave me an even bigger, better Kawai. So just saying, that's the way it works and can work. Now the next card I want to put together is the Broken Mirror and the Shaman. Card. Now, the Shaman card is about being your own healer. Actually, did I draw this for you, Christy? Did I draw this as a card at some point for you um, recently? This is about being your own healer. Ah, well, you come up again. If cards come up again, they need to be noticed. Now, being your own healer, we've got the fractured mirror there. The fractured mirror can be self-image, uh, hurt, pain, you know, anything that hasn't gone away, broken glass, really does epitomize the word pain, doesn't it? You know, it's ouchy stuff. And so the shaman suggests that you go into your heart, you go into yourself deep. That's what a shaman does. You go nice and deep into your cellular structure. And while you can't see that on here, we've actually got a, a molecule on here uh, as part of the picture. We've got the, the, the spirit particle, actually, the molecule and what it looks like for those godlike experiences. And so when, when we're looking for that, we can go deep into the earth, we can go deep into meditation, we can look at a situation that keeps recurring a particular feeling and think, well, I don't know why I feel like that. Well, now's the time to go find out. And then once you get that, once you sort that, once you bring that forward, you'll find that the mirror is, is, is in the position that it can heal itself or, or repair itself. I, I've always found it fascinating, you know, this, this association, you break a mirror and you get seven years bad luck. And I often think about grief and I often think about the hurts that we carry with us for many, many years. And it's a self-image injury, isn't it? It's how we feel about ourselves if somebody hasn't treated us so well, especially if we're in a younger age uh, age group. The, the message from you to you on the right there, uh, that's my nice little Aboriginal card, by the way. And that, that's a card of uh, ancestry, DNA, understanding our history, understanding where we've come from. And I think you're being asked with this card to remember where you've come from and not always look to give yourself a, a task or a job or not always looking for that spiritual lesson. Uh, think about <clears throat> how much you've improved, how much you've grown and learn to appreciate that as well. You know, we can work on ourselves spiritually, but if we're never getting anywhere or if we're, <coughs> excuse me, if we're telling ourselves we're never getting anywhere, then it's, it's, it's almost a, a thankless task, isn't it? It's a task that uh, I'm back, sorry, um, it, it went a bit funny there. Uh, it's a task that takes us away from the joy of life, the joy of spiritual uh, development, when we're always saying, I've got to go back to the beginning, or I've still got to learn this, or I haven't healed that. It's this really a nice energy, a nice way to, to think and promote yourself to accepting you know, that you have traveled far, that you have made gains, that you have grown. And with that, those improvements allow you to feel good about yourself, even when you know, okay, I could develop this a little bit more, but I don't need to go back to the beginning because I've already come so far, I've already done so much work. When you appreciate the work you've done, you'll always be in a better position going forward.
then when you're in a better position going forward, you can appreciate where you're going and, and, and really, really look at the areas of growth. And rather than think, oh, I've still got this to learn, it's a really wise thing to perhaps sit there and go, well, actually, I've got more to learn here, but I've already done a pretty good job so far. And that allows your brain and your body to move past any old patterns. It really does. It helps to shift you through um, older patterns and past patterns. This is Michelle's reading, Michelle from Florida. Welcome to the show, Michelle. It's always nice to see you around. Uh, the same thing. Oh, I forgot to ask you, did, did anything stand out in those cards for you, Christy? Do you want to have another look before I move on? Um, and then you can tell me if there's anything. Yes, what was it? You want another look or? Um, let's have a look at that. We go back to that. There we go. Sorry about that, Michelle. <laughs> on hold. Um, and if you want me to blow blow them up bigger, say so, and then we'll pop them there. I I didn't mention too this this card here with the fan is the is the solitude. It's the tower. It's not really a tarot tower, so I was hesitant to put that in there. But it does epitomise that. Sometimes you just got to take a bit of time for yourself. In this case, that's what it feels like. It doesn't feel defensive. It doesn't feel like an issue. Um, but it just means that, um, you know, when you take that little bit of time, it gives you just that bit of rallying, that bit of energy that you need. So is there anything that stands out for you, Miss Christy? And cards just tell me to stop as I'm moving them around. And then uh, you can tell me what, what, what interests you or what, which bits sort of catch your eye. Just the one thing, and that will bring it right home to you. So there's that, uh, what they call the God particle. Uh, I thought it was very important to, to pop it in there. Um, and that's our, our nice mirror, broken mirror, shattered glass. Uh, really interesting card. Um, the book that will be available with the cards, I know somebody will pick it up. Uh, there's our, our ancestry, our DNA, our, our connection to everything that was. We talk about that and then we forget about it as soon as we've talked about it. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Um, and so with the DNA strands, if you like, we have a connection to our grandparents and our, and our parents that we're not aware of. It's a subtle learning that we're born with uh, for survival. And so the toughest thing to come past with development is those things, that they're a belief system that you don't even know you have until you start exploring it and you realise, oh, actually, my eating problem isn't mine. It was my mum's. <laughs> My eating problem isn't mine, it's not my unhappiness, it's not my experience that created that, but by her. And then she's reinforced it, and it may have come from her grand, from your grandparent in any amount of different ways. And so understanding your lineage, your history, um, what went on for you in your life, and the fact that we are connected to um, thousands upon thousands of years of humanity. And the reason I chose the Aboriginals for this card is they are the oldest known race on the planet. They have been recorded at 50,000 plus years living in Australia. Uh, thank you, Chrissy. My eating problem is protection. doesn't work, but I do it anyway. Hey, you know what? The interesting thing about that is um, when it comes to an eating problem, interesting I mentioned that thing, um, when it comes to an eating problem, if you get away from the idea that it's protection and it's this and it's that, and you think, okay, what if I changed all of that and I just decided it's just a habit? I want you to think about that. It's just a habit. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. It's just a habit. And that habit is so ingrained that I use it in different ways, if that makes sense. I might use it for protection, but you said it doesn't work. So clearly, a shield would be better, right? <laughs> so if you're still doing anything, it becomes a, a, a psychobabble thing where we've heard all of the psychology as to why people overeat. But what if it was just a bad habit? And we do inherit bad habits. You know, if your parents are smokers, you're 70%, 75% more likely to be a smoker of something, even if it's not cigarettes. If they're drinkers, you're 75% more likely to be a drinker. If they have a food issue, more or less, if they starve themselves, overeat, if they force feed you, how many of us had to eat till our plate was empty, even when we were full? Think on that for a second. So you're being taught then a habit of overeating, not necessarily a habit of being a dieter or, or being fat. It's quite an interesting thing. I don't know about you ladies, how many of you were brought up with this because I was. There are starving kids in Ethiopia. <laughs> You've got to eat all your dinner. You know, we were brought up with that and, and we were tiny, uh, tiny little children and, and we're eating these big meals because abundance was the thing. It was proof that you could feed your family. I don't know. But we, we had these bloody great roasts and big casseroles and plates of mints and mountains of potatoes. And, of course, we were told to eat until it was finished. If you didn't, you got up for breakfast or you got sat at that table and stared at and leered at. In my family, there were seven kids and two adults, mum and dad. 
And we were told we weren't allowed to leave the table to the last person and finished eating. So now you've got peer pressure, you've got kids kicking you under the table, you've got people glaring at you, and you just know that once you leave the table, your older sister's going to give you a whack for making them wait at the table longer than necessary when they just wanted to go and play. So, so you know, we have this in play. And if we ignore that, then we can take on, when you talk about you eat for protection, um, again, something like have a bit of an issue with the spirituality is putting the blame on the victim, if you like, you know. It's saying, you know, yeah, you might have been taught that, but it's your own fault. It's like, eh? Hey, what? That doesn't add up. So there are life um, life experiences and there are life teachings that are not your fault. But once you recognize it for what it is and you don't add where we're going with that, then it's easier for you to, to deal with it. That's the catalyst card. That's the one that um, has the phoenix on it. Let me go get it over that way. Go the other way. That's it there. We've got the Phoenix there. We've got Sedna. We've got poor old house there. This is all of this patterning in the back is the cuneiform writing, the first writing of man uh, that was ever written. Um, so is there something in there that stands out? It's the flame card, which of course the catalyst would be. Uh, you know, out of a horrible situation, no matter what it is, you could have a big fight with somebody, you could have a breakdown in relations, things could go horribly wrong. Usually something good comes from that. And very often what happens is it forces you to make a move where you might have been thinking about it and not really doing it, or you might have been hanging back, not for good reasons, you might have been over something, um, but, but really did need to move on. And then we drag our legs and tail sometimes, and then we lie in quiet and think, oh, gee, I just want to be somewhere else, I just want to be doing something else. Next thing you know, you get kicked in the butt by a catalyst that is a person who has a hissy fit or a situation or event that gets out of control. And then you're on the other side and you're having to make new decisions and new choices. Uh, and this is the one that I felt was for you related to this card. This is the karma card. And these two together indicate uh, that karma will, will play a role very quickly in anything that you do. So if you do something wrong, you're going to get slapped very quickly. You're not going to get away with much. <laughs> if you do something right, you'll get a fairly quick reward. Okay, so we're we happy with all of that now, Christy? Yes, no? Oh, excellent. All right, then. So moving right along, now we get to you, Paul Michelle. Paul Michelle. And we've got Jules having a reading today as well. Um, so here we've got, back to this again, we have got uh, the manifestation card, and we've got that next to the DNA or the history card, your ancestry card. And I want to join that with this middle card here. This is the snakes and ladders card, and this is duality. And the duality is, you know, like that game of snakes and ladders. You know, you go up, and you land on the long square and you have a bit of a slide backwards. But as long as you keep going up, you know, and as long as you keep throwing the right dice, making a few decent choices, you quite easily end up at the right point at the end of the game. But to get to the end of the game, one of the interesting things about snakes and ladders was always, I don't know if you've ever played it, but you had to get an exact number to get out. You know, you couldn't throw 10 and get out if you only had two. You had to throw two. So the, the, more, the closer you get to the finish line, the more exacting, the more exacting the requirement becomes. And it's like experience in life, you know. People give you a lot of leeway when you're learning. Once you've got X amount of experience, they say, well, you should know now. And so it becomes more responsibility. It becomes more exacting. You have to work not harder necessarily at it, but you have to work more appropriately, more correctly, that kind of thing, more efficiently, all of those things as experience comes into play. Now, the manifestation card is right there, so you may be trying to build something right now, trying to put something out there, or trying to at least consolidate it. And it says, with the, uh, with the DNA or with the ancestry card, it says, think about where you started, what your goals were. Sometimes we lose, um, I lose our, our, our confidence. Sometimes we lose the vision a little bit. It all seems a bit hard. Are we making the right choice? Because we've got these ups and downs going on. And in this instance, it's saying, yes, you have. Remember why. What's behind it all? What's the energy underneath it all that drove you in this direction to start with? So that's quite a big three-card uh, thing there. Manifestation is an interesting card, just insofar as we think of it being a house, a car, or whatever. But usually it's a bit more than that. When we're manifesting something, we're manifesting a lifestyle. We're manifesting um, a, a, an ability to buy what we want. We're manifesting um, a freedom, you know, or we're manifesting a, a relationship that... It's never an in-the-moment thing. We don't go and consider 
making $2 a manifestation. We consider making $200 a manifestation. So what do we want it for? What is the goal? Why are we doing it? Um, we're not just doing it to, to, to do it for the sake of doing it. So you're being asked to look at that there. Now, I've immediately got these uh, three cards underneath it that I want to put together as well. We've got the male or strength card, we've got the visionary, and we've got the vacation. Uh, you might spend a little bit of time at the moment daydreaming. <laughs> That's the feeling I've got around these cards. Uh, that, that the daydreaming, though, for you, or dreaming, the daydreaming or dreaming, but I think daydreaming might be in there, is visionary. So the idea of what you're envisioning, what you're vision, having a visionary experience of, can become action for you with the male card. And you may have experienced experience this a fair bit in your life where you find yourself sort of having this little visionary experience or a dream or a meditation or something, and then months, days, or years later, you find yourself actually living that. So um, what's the word? There's deja vu in here as well. So it's that sort of I've seen this before energy. I can see where this is going to go. And the visionary, that's the mermaid card in here. It's got a little hummingbird chatting to us, so whispered messages, you're being guided, it's, it's all sort of there. You may just not quite have the action in play right now, but anything you're envisioning uh, will come to pass, by the way. Uh, we've got the mail card there, which guarantees things are going to work out. You're going to put the effort in, things are going to, they're just going to put themselves out there by your own actions. So that's how that works. That card there suggests that you get in, you get things done, you get things stuck in. He's right next to the talents card. Now this talents card says your talents are what are your way forward. But be, this card next to it is uh, the, the card of integrity. Be careful that you make sure people are very clear or you're very clear about where you're at and what you're trying to do. Uh, don't assume um, and do watch out for those people that aren't quite as honest with you as you would like. That give you an impression and don't follow through. I think you may experience a bit of that going forward. Um, they may smile and support you on the surface, but not necessarily actually step up and support you in the way that you hoped, expected, or the way that they said they would. And then we come back to this card, and it suggests that you'll be relying on your own talents rather than the offerings of others, which is kind of cool. Um, you've got some really nice cards in here, because next thing we go to, uh, well, when you look at this one, you go, really? It's the conflict card, but it's next to the match, okay? Now, the match, of course, is that tricky little energy where things aren't quite what they appear to be. So within a conflict, you've got the wind fanning, 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 blah, 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 fanning the flames. So here we've got the wind from the match. It's a wind card, and here's the fire. And this is that added layer that you can read if, if, if it feels appropriate, and it does here, where not necessarily knowing, it, it, it fans the flames uh, and can create some conflict. We've got um, a, a little a fan in here, and that's another thing that you can read. If you notice that you've got a repetitive pattern um, of fans, and you notice the fans in a number of cards, there's a slightly defensive quality about this. So perhaps uh, a person who's appearing to support you actually sort of digs in or tries to make you justify yourself or explain yourself makes you feel bad about what you're doing. But I've still got things aren't quite what they seem there. So they may not be trying to do you damage, or they may not be trying hurt you or they may simply just not understand but I do have some conflict around you if it's not in play yet it's coming up um, and try to dig a little bit deeper and make sure too that it's worth the effort because we've got the duality card or the integrity card um, it suggests that that person may not mean what they say either so they may be just saying it to, to sound smart clever or, or whatever now the message that we've got from you to you is the ship now you're going to like this one because that's the ship coming in. The ship coming in means the trade is done, the deal is done, uh, anything you've been working for or something you've been waiting for, especially if it's been taking a while, it's coming on in. It's coming away and it's inevitable that you will be able to reap the rewards of that. Uh, it's a beautiful card. And even in the tarot, the ships, uh, the Lenormand, they all represent a deal that's done. It's all worked out. Money's, money's changed hands. Now, I'm going to blow these up a little bit and we'll, we'll scroll through them. And then I just want you to tell me if there's one thing uh, that stands out in any of the images. Um, and if, if it does, just, just tell me what it is. And I'll just move, just go right, 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 up, down, or whatever. As I start moving them, or just tell me to stop so you can look at a particular card. Um, I'm looking. <laughs> Good on you. Let's see, a Snakes and Matters card. And you just keep your eyes on them and let me know if something, anything in the picture itself stands out. They're a little blurry. 
I had this last time I put them up and I thought I'd put them up a decent size and they're a little blurry so it must come up a bit smaller. That's that conflict card. It's quite an interesting card because it suggests too that sometimes we just need to look and, and look around and we might see the sun, you know, get our head out from under the clouds or whatever it is that we're doing. Here's your ship card. Those flames stand out, the purple part in, in this one here. Are you talking about this one? Yes. Uh, the lightning, you mean? It's actually lightning. Uh, does that sound right for you? Yes. Light, lightning, yeah. Um, for for the um, lightning, expect sudden events, sudden um, situations, uh, sudden um, sudden sudden things, sort of coming out of nowhere, if you like, a, a bolt from the blue. Um, there's that whole um, conflict energy, but it doesn't feel like something that you would necessarily expect, which you know sometimes we do. Um, when, when we are looking at something we expect, we sort of can plan for it or we can avoid it, um, but not always. So the lightning is electric, and I'm just going to read you what I've actually put in the book as the interpretation for lightning, and that's how the book works. There's the card, and then there's these symbols that are in the cards, and some things aren't actually explained, but explosive and instant, uh, so that's a conflict that will come out of nowhere. It could be a storm in a teacup, which means it could be a blow up and then that clears the air and everything could move on, or a major upheaval while, while you don't see it coming. It will be short lived and over before you know it. So take a little time to work out how things escalated and treat that knowledge as guidance in the future. We don't have to engage in every battle we are drawn into. It is vital for peaceful living to learn and grow past the need to butt heads unnecessarily. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, a, a real interesting thing to be attracted to there. And um, yeah, it's quite a nice card. Difficult when you've got things like conflict, but at the same time, you know, it happens, doesn't it? It's got to happen sometimes, I guess. So that's what we've got there for you, Miss Michelle. And moving right along to Jules, Jules, Miss Jules, great to have you here. Uh, oh, do I have to upload that? Hang on, do I get it? Oh no, I have to upload it. Select file. I just drew it as you asked for it before, so it's still on my computer. Only takes a second, not a problem. Here we are. Yeah, that, that's me uploading and clicking too many times, <laughs> as one does. And this is for Jules. Uh, you're so welcome, Jules. Now, we've got this man card. He's popping in here quite a bit. Now, just so as you understand, I've got an automatic shuffler. So there's no me in it and the cards are drawn and shuffled and then redrawn. So we've got the man and the match next to each other. Now it tells me that a male is probably going to play a, a rather quixotic role in your life at the moment. If it's not right now, it's certainly coming forward. Um, that what you think you know or he may puzzle you, uh, he may give you an impression. The match is interesting because it involves sleight of hand or it involves deception, but it isn't always deliberate deception. I want to say that, but it can be deceiving. Uh, and it can be deliberate. We're not pretending it isn't. So we've got a male energy here that's uh, going to cause you a little bit of shtuk uh, for a wee while uh, or try to pull the wool over your eyes. You know, take take note of that. So be extra vigilant in those areas. Uh, straight below that, I've got uh, the DNA, the Ancestry card and the Vibrance card. Now I'm going to show you this Vibrance card. Um, there's our man and... Now the Vibrance card here, it's about friendship, it's about bonding, and so it suggests too that you can have a really lovely time in the next wee while with a strong bonded friendship or creating a nice bond of friendship, but there is a need to enjoy your friends, uh, gather them around you, and we're not talking about new friends, we're talking about people that have been in your life for a little while, or a person has been in your life for a little while, uh, and that you really enjoy their company, and I just see that working really nicely for you. Um, there's a reminiscing around this because we've got an ancestry card there, so the chances to talk about old times and the, you know things as they went once upon a time. Uh, there's quite a bit of fun in there. I like that for you, and I just think that that's uh, a really pleasant complimentary little thing to have going on. Pop it back here so I can see the next grouping. Now we've got journeys uh, and serenity around you. These two I want to bring together. Um, every little trip you take is, is really satisfying for you, whether it's to wander down to the river or wander down to the beach, I don't know, but wander down to the water somewhere, there are two water carts, um, whether it's the local park, whatever. It's just got this being very, very serene for you that you can find a really nice, pleasant fit, a nice, pleasant 
um, energy from doing that uh, right at the moment and probably always do find that that's very touching for you, that you know, when your life gets a bit hectic, just going and sitting near the water allows you to feel quite peaceful and I, I, I quite like that for you. The serenity card is quite nice because it does also indicate a need to find some serenity. If you find you're in a bit of a conflicted situation, step away, uh, give it a moment. Now, interestingly, I've got your ship coming in and manifestation. I want to bring those two together. Uh, that does suggest to me that as you work, you get paid. <laughs> as you put energy out there, there will be energy coming back in. It's working together. It's a strong earth energy putting these two together. So just keep doing what you're doing in that area. Um, the, 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 it's working. Whether you know that or not right at the moment, you may feel that things are moving along and, and getting into the spaces that you would like them to be. And it's not always about a job. It can be, but it can be about developing your home. It can be about um, building a family, those kind of things as well. So whatever area of your life that you've been focused on, uh, the chances are really good at the moment that that's going to work nicely for you and you're going to feel really good about that. When does the ship come in? Oh, now there is a good question. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the the conflict card is here for you too, but I wanted to isolate it to this visionary girl. You know, the visionary card. Um, that means I've got a feeling you're going to think something's going wrong, but it isn't. I don't know. Do you do that, Jules? <laughs> but it's almost like you, you've got this idea that something's wrong, or somebody's not happy, or something's going wrong. Uh, it, it might be okay, a conflict. But then there isn't, and the visionary card allows you to maybe listen a bit more clearly to your um, your intuition rather than um, being worried about something that you're scared of. Does that make sense? You know, worry is about being scared of an outcome, I suppose. It was scared of conflict, scared of things going wrong. Um, but it's not intuition. Uh, intuition allows you to know, well, I don't need to worry about that one. Uh, but this one over here might be worth a look and then you can take action and you can plan and you can make things work for yourself. Uh, so I, I would have a little look at that. Uh, this could be too where the water comes in because it flows on literally from there um, and you've got that nice water in there. That, that when you go and sit by the water it allows you to, to relax, it allows you to let go of those things. Perhaps that's something you need to try if you haven't done it before. Now the message from you to you, from your higher self if you like or your subconscious, your inner self, is in fact signs and the signs card suggests that it's a really good time for you to take notice of signs, that song that comes on the radio randomly, words that somebody says to you, a picture that you see going by, something that feels maybe like deja vu or something that presents itself as a sign for you for a question that you have asked. That also means if you haven't asked a question about receiving a sign, it's a really good time, do it now uh, and you will get a positive go forward You'll get nothing or you'll get a woe back in whichever way that goes. And nothing says, you might not want to do it right now, but it doesn't mean you can't. A woe back says, yeah, let that one go. Um, but also, if you think you're getting something, if you think things are giving you a little messages here and there, then you're absolutely right. So take them as what they are. Um, get on the net if you've seen something unusual in the animal world or plant world. And I don't mean unusual. If there's lots of birds around you and then you see a bird on the window, yeah, it's not necessarily a sign. Uh, but if you're in a place where you see something completely unusual or something you've not seen before or not seen for a long time, I think it's pretty safe to take that on board. Now, I'm going to run through these cards for you too, and if you've got any part of any of them um, that steps out for you, then just tell me to stop. I'll start moving through them now. Uh, it can be any part of the picture, and that's fine. And just tell me to stop when or if you see something that really steps out for you. Is uh, nicer when the pictures are clearer, I know. I was going to do just three card readings and I thought, oh, there's only three of you. Oh, I'll, I'll just do, well, there was two to start with. I'll just do the 10 card reading so you can have a really good time with that. Enjoy them. And anything stepping up there for you yet, Ms. Jules? The blue of the fish. Uh, this one here, you like the blue? Well, the blue is actually um, very light and it's got a bit of independent nature going on there. Um, that basically is suggesting that you, 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 you really do like to go along with things. Oh, the pink and purple is the next card. So it's the colours that are standing up for you. So pink and purple, 
you're heading into not just money zones, but you're also heading into the zone of higher thinking. I know what I should be doing. And then when we allow that blue in there, this is aura reading really, when you allow that blue in there, that blue is suggesting that if you do things in an independent way, you know, you're only the way that feels right for you, not necessarily bugger it, I'm doing it my way, whether that's right, wrong or whatever, uh, you'll, you'll get the best rewards. You do love being near the water, very tranquil. So that's, that was a, a major message for you, that if you do get stressed and worried, then deliberately go find water somewhere. Do you have a park or a river near you? First thing I thought of was a river, actually, and then I thought, oh, maybe the sea or a park uh, or a lake. Um, quite interesting stuff as we go forward. Um, I like the two hearts at that same pink and purple. So those two hearts, they're about um, emotions being pulled into a conflict. That, that makes it more somebody you know. So you may worry about another person and how they think and how they feel about you quite a bit, uh, especially if you're in a relationship, but it can be anybody, family, friends, uh, that you may you now and again try to fix things or if they don't respond to you. It, it's not as if to me there's something they're saying and doing, it's how you feel like, oh, they're quiet today, so I need to fix that perhaps, or I'm worried that that might mean something, because I'm worried that if somebody says they want to talk to me, that it's going to go really bad, that kind of worry, um, because it's the two hearts that suggest an emotional bond with somebody uh, that may concern you uh, fairly regularly. So it's quite an interesting thing. Shall we have a look at these uh, these new tarot cards? What do you reckon, hey? <laughs> okay, Dan ran off, so too bad for Dan. Um, this is the, the veil, number two card, and the number two card, uh, well, that's not an impossibility either. Um, sometimes, though, conflict comes before a relationship as well. But yeah, it's a conflict card, so we can't ignore that. But it's not about being in conflict, it's about worrying about the relationship. So it might mean, too, that even if somebody did come along, you'd spend more time worrying about whether they cared about you or not than you would have worried about or focused on the relationship itself. Um, so this is the, the number two of the major arcana part of the deck. The deck I'm calling the Victorian Tarot at this stage, it will probably stay because I quite like it. Um, you're very welcome, Jill. So this is the card which is normally the high priestess and, um, um, and, and denotes uh, that, that ability to cross over from the physical realm, you know, to the subtle realm. So it's a pretty nice uh, energy with regard to that. So that's one card I hope you like. And so this is the first look for, I think uh, Michelle may not have heard, I'm not sure. This is first look at my new tarot deck. I haven't finished it, not even close. Um, I've just started it, but it's going to be a full tarot deck, not an oracle card deck. Uh, this is the feminine card, which is the Empress card in the tarot. Um, I'm really quite happy with her and how she looks. So what I'm trying to do with these is I'm trying to get away from what I call and think of as irrelevant symbology. Now I'm very, as Christy will tell you, I'm very into the symbology and I've learned it and I understand it, but it's not really modern relevant. Does that make sense? You know, we don't understand it really. Most people, you have to go and learn it. You have to learn a bit of the Kabbalah, you have to learn a bit of Hebrew, you have to learn quite a lot of stuff. You have to learn the symbols of, of what the robes for uh, the Pope means and you know, you've got all this stuff going on. And so I wanted to take the essence of those cards because Rider Waite um, wrote that there was no meaning to the tarot cards but the pictures. And I like that. And, and so what I was aiming for here is that there's a few words that work for every card. And I wanted those words to be the name of the card. Yes, you can still read them as a tarot, and I've aligned them in the book. I'm aligning them to the tarot card that matches the card. And so, of course, the Empress is about your intuition. Uh, she's about your feminine, about your nurture, and all of that sort of stuff. She's about leading from the heart. Um, so quite good fun. And so that's where I'm heading with it, a very simplistic, um, and, and the book will be very simplistic as well, very simple little meanings uh, to make it really easy. Um, choices. This this is why I'm calling it the Victorian tarot because I got a little bit what's the word frivolous I think with my pictures. <laughs> I don't know if frivolous is the right word, but I, I sort of got romantic maybe. Uh, thank you. Um, and choices is, is the lovers card in the tarot. And the lovers card because it's called the lovers so confuses so many people. It's not about lovers. It's about making choices and the most important choice we make in life would actually be a partnership choice uh, whether it's a, a love partnership or not and while it can indicate that 
It also indicates that we're not necessarily making the best choice or that there may be other choices that we're not considering, hence the man in the background. She's with this man in the front, he's offering her something, but she's thinking about that man. And so it's like she's making a convenient choice, not necessarily one of love. So we're, we're going to that. And then, of course, when we don't make the right choices, things can go horribly wrong. So we have the green heart, <laughs> just to show that, yeah, it's an emotional card. She's also got an apple um, you know, an apple is an offering, but it's also temptation. If we give in to the temptation to make a choice that's super easy, we may not make the choice that's for the best. You know, we may end up causing more problems than resolving anything for ourselves. So uh, quite a big deal for me. Making choices would have to be one of the biggest, most important uh, aspects of, of anything. And then we've got the evolution card, number 13. Now, this is the death card in the tarot, which everybody freaks out at, right? <laughs> you draw the death card, and it doesn't matter who you're drawing that for, they freak out. They go, oh, I've got the death card. And, and it doesn't matter how quickly you jump in and say, well, hang on a minute, it's transformation, and we'll just see how it works with the cards around it and its position. They're already freaked out, you know. Um, I had a shop in Pukakoi a long time ago, and in that shop I had this... Uh, I had a number of sets of cards on the table and women could come in, mainly women, anybody could come in, but they'd come in and sit down, they'd make themselves a cup of tea or coffee, they'd play around with the cards and you'd see if they pulled the death card out of the tarot deck, you know, they'd just roll their eyes and sort of put it back and pretend they hadn't seen it, you know. And so I wanted um, my, my new tarot deck to, to, to be relevant to the meaning of the card without the scary aspect, although I wanted it to be a bit intense. And, of course, we've got the repair. Hello, Gemini Moon, how are you? Uh, we've got the repair with the bowl. We've got the, the evolution, the transformation of the man with the butterfly wings. Uh, and he's moving forward. You know, He's moving with, with, with determination and stride. Um, the alcorns have a huge amount of uh, historical meaning. So we, we're heading down that track with it. That the picture has a few clues. The word has a few clues. Uh, and you can use a regular tarot book if you wanted to uh, have a look into the meanings of an individual card. I'm just showing them Gemini Moon, my new tarot deck that I've just started uh, putting together. And uh, everybody's getting a, a f what we call a first look at the cards. Uh, I'm not even close to finished yet. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's just a little bit of a fun trotting out of a new deck after, after doing readings with my regular deck. The advisor, the fifth card, these are all major arcana so far. Um, this is the equivalent to the Hierophant in the tarot deck. Uh, this particular man was a, a swami of, of huge note uh, back in the day, uh, going back into the 18th century. Again, it's that Victorian theme, you know, we're going along that time frame. But I've got the Ten Commandments in Hebrew here because without religion or even with it, the Ten Commandments make a lot of sense, right? <laughs> you know, let's, let's not go go beating up on somebody and murdering them. Let's not go and uh, bonk the neighbor's wife or husband. Let's, let's, let's live with a little bit of decorum and maturity and, and have a spiritual caring for, for other people. So he's, he's the advisor. And that to me was a hierophant pretty much is always about consulting somebody else with more knowledge, more understanding. But that person must always have a grounding in both an, a current affairs knowledge as well as a spiritual knowledge. Those two things together as opposed to separate. Uh, quite quite good fun really uh, in a card and and you know I, I just I don't know I just think it, it makes it easy to isolate um, and look at just exactly what's going on. But, uh, the um, the strength card is the one you're going to look at next. The strength card, or I've called it character. I might change the name of that yet. You know, like I said, it's early days, but. Um, it is character to me because strength is self-discipline, but it's, it's not just self-discipline. That would be a part of the card meaning and an interpretation. But it's also about developing character when we're faced with things that might make us angry or situations that uh, cause us a little bit of strife or force us to, to think about others, not just ourselves. Then character is required. Um, the roses at the top. I've always had a thing about the fruit of the soul. It's, it's very... Um, thank you so much, Jill. It, to me, it's a very, uh, what would we call that now? You know, the Masons, uh, the Freemasons used the, the rose quite heavily on their aprons, and the highest apron that you can attain is a red rose. Uh, I was speaking to a Mason about this years ago, because I didn't know that, and he went to his wardrobe, and he pulled it out and showed it to me, and he says, I pulled this out and showed it to you, 
shouldn't have done that, but we were just talking about this um, sisterhood of the rose, and you were talking about the white brotherhood, and he says, and I, things just started clicking in his mind. He started to understand. Thank you, Gemini. He started to understand that there was a deeper spiritual meaning, and he said, you know what? It's all been lost in the Masons. We just do the rituals without really knowing why. And so I, I figured that that's a bit here. Now this woman in this picture is in actual fact a real lion tamer from the 1800s as well. Uh, and all of the photos that were of her, these, this, these weren't the lions that she was with. <laughs> they're, they're two separate pictures. Well, there's four or five, six separate pictures. But uh, what I noticed about here is you saw all of these lion tamer pictures, right? And they'd have a, a stool or a chair that they'd be poking the lions with, or they'd have a big stick that they'd be holding up to the lions. Uh, and, and one guy always had a gun at his hip. You know, I was like, oh, you're not very confident, are you? This lady was just sitting with her lions and every shot she was relaxed. She was calm. She didn't have anything. And I just thought, you know, there's your lion tamer, right? There's the one that can tame, can tame those wild child immature urges that we've got, our anger, our irresponsibility, our impatience, all of those things we can um, pop in there because this lady is just so calm with it. Um, if we let them loose, they're not nice, right? It's not nice to see somebody lose their temper and get upset. It's not nice to see somebody trying to berate somebody else or somebody trying to make everybody else do what they want without necessarily considering the whole group or other people. You know, this is what I want and too bad if it hurts or upsets you. And this is a little bit of America in this one. <laughs> so don't have a laugh at me, all right? Um, this is the control card. Uh, and of course, it's the chariot. So I really did want the horses to be in there to to, to represent the chariot. It's a bit of the wild west uh, going on there. And um, so I think uh, that was a little bit of fun for me that I, when I threw that in there. And um, I just uh, I like the way that the, the horses are all sort of interacting in different sort of ways. Now the chariot's really important to me because it's not about being in control or being controlling. It's about you're on the edge of losing control of something. It, it could get out of control if you don't focus, if you don't pay attention, if you don't keep on top of it. And there's a lot of different aspects to that. Whenever I read that for somebody, when I'm doing tarot readings, and I see that chariot card, it's really important to look at what cards are around it to see which area this may affect. And sometimes the loss of control of something can take years to get it back, right? So a, a really valid and important card. Uh, my main drive is to get through the major arcana uh, within the next month or so and then move on to the minor arcana. And and I'm, I'm going to show you this one. I showed a friend this, uh, a New Zealand friend, and when I showed it, she said, that's a scary card. So tell me if you think it's scary, because I really didn't see it that way. Um, does, do any of you see that as a scary card? And this is this is good for me too, because if it's scary, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think that's awesome. <laughs> And if it's not, it's okay. But I didn't see it as scary. I just saw it as um, revealing, I thought. Myself, that's what I was aiming for anyway. Something that was a little bit revealing, something that showed something we can't normally see. You know, we talk about, I can see that light shining from within you. Uh, we talk about shine your light. You know, good on you. You don't feel it's scary. Well, it can be scary, card, but higher self can be at times. There's a bit of that too. This actually is the um, Hermit card in the Tarot in the Major Arcana. And I always read the Hermit card as, you know, you can shine your light your own way. You can um, you can you can go forward. You know, you can you can go forward with your knowledge, what you understand. You can shine your own light. You don't need somebody giving you direction. And I've always seen that as a higher self kind of deal. You know, when you're really not sure, probably the best thing you can do is ask your inner self, go up, go high, and put yourself in a position where you are guiding yourself. I always think that's the ultimate position in any situation when you can guide yourself to the right um, outcome and the right solutions, etc. Uh, there's a strong metal element in this because it, it comes from a statue, a brass statue actually. And so when you're when you're looking at statues and they're brass, they're very solid. And then you've got the ethereal light coming out from within that, which uh, I like that um, contradiction, I suppose, because it's very human, isn't it? You know, we've got this. Um, very sort of standard. This one will be easy to know what it is because I've actually written that on the card as well as the name that I've given it. Um, but yeah, it's the Wheel of Fortune card in the tarot, but I, I call it fate. If people think of it as good luck or bad luck, I never see it as that either. I don't, I don't see it as a luck card. I just say, you know, life goes up and down and you could be in a downer or you could be in an upper depending on the cards that you've been dealt. 
But as it stands, it is a part of fate. And that means, you know, whatever's going on at the moment is in the hands of fate and it might be out of your control to control. It might be um, things have gone so far, they're just going to happen now the way they're going to happen. Uh, and it feels like that. It's fated. Um, is it good or bad? To, to me, it's like I get so many questions and Gemini Moon would be really aware of this one too. So many questions from women about this man and that man and this lady and that lady from from, from guys and and, and there's so many people that are asking about so many individuals over a period of time. Um, but the, the, if, if you see a relationship going forward, if you see them having a bit of fun, uh, the next thing they're saying, you know, is that going to be marriage? Is it going to be this? And it's like, well, it might even be a good relationship. Seeing a relationship doesn't mean it's a good relationship. And so that's going to depend on the individual players. Are you going to take a risk? And there's a bit of risk in this card. Are you going to take a gamble? I've got to say, if I got this card laid out next to the full, I'd be worried. <laughs> I'd be really worried. I was like, oh no, that's got to go horribly wrong, right? It's got to be like something's going to happen. It's going to be a pretty tricky little situation. And I've got one more to show you. And well, I know there's a few more, but I'll show you one more. Um, I've got the, oops, come on here. This is the one I finished today. So it's the newest one. And, and uh, I hope you enjoyed our little... Um, first look at my new, oh no, I did show you that. Sorry, I hit the wrong one. I hit the wrong one. My bad. Um, I'll go get it. I'll go get it. After this one here. One. Um, this is the Justice card, um, which I've also called Karma because the Justice card is exactly that. It's the weighing of the scales. Um, and that is the karma card, really, of the tarot, would be the justice card, uh, that there's a point and a moment. And um, again, it's fairly Victorian, and as odd as she looks, it's a statue with a dress on because she's covering up her nudity, uh, her reality, whatever that might be, um, her metallic nature. But it's a, it's a very interesting thing. And um, that's about it. You know, I think we've done 14 cards, but I think we're, we're about done for today. Uh, and when I've done the set, then we'll trot them out and we'll do some readings. You can certainly ask some readings. Go ahead, Michelle. Fire away. We've got 10 minutes left, I think. Oh, no, we've got three minutes left. Fire away. We can still go. I wonder if changing the colour to gold or something on this card of the dress, you mean, Jill? Do you mean of this dress? Oh, the scales. Um, the, the brass. Oh, I'll, I'll have a look at that. Gold is so hard, you know. When you're trying to get a metallic look on an actual card art-wise, it's just about impossible to get. And even if you got it, say you painted it in metallic paint, then you would have to go and give it to a printer who couldn't replicate that. So you mean as opposed to them being white, make them more like this top bit up here, do you think? More like this top bit up here of it? Um, Okay, so I've got perhaps we're looking, um, I'm, I'm picking, I'm, I'm going early January, Michelle, when the ship comes in, by the way. And I agree, you said I was visualising things, but I feel I'm also receiving messages telepathically. Am I getting telepathic? Absolutely. When I say visions, that's just a general term for me because I'm very visionary. But it's, it's for most people, it's more than one style of receiving information. It's in general, a variety of ways that we get it, and it's just easy to say see rather than see here, touch, feel. You know, <laughs> it's easier to say, and I see. Um, so that's how we put it. I'm, I am very visionary, so I tend to use that word. With that visual visual card, by the way, there's a little hummingbird. Was that for your reading? This so is a little hummingbird in her ear. Um, you can listen to the archives of this um, to bring out the scars. Okay, I'm going to make that my next mission is to see if I can't make them more goldy, make them the same as this top bit. Really, they'd have to be the same, right? As this bit up, up here, the, the balancing bit. Um, make them the same. I, I, I thank you for that little bit of input. Awesome. Ta very much. Now, I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Go and have a listen to the archives, Michelle, because I've got a feeling it was you that I mentioned the, with the visionary card. I mentioned that she's got a little hummingbird in her ear. And so that might answer that question for you. I hope you've all enjoyed the show, and I hope you've enjoyed our first look at my new set of cards. <laughs> Uh, and I hope you enjoyed my Sacred Souls Oracle card deck. And so we'll look forward to doing another show and hopefully we'll have, be able to trot these out within a few months. You're most welcome, everybody. And remember, enjoy your week and don't be a part of your own problem. Ciao for now.